As we're developing our horizontal alignment, one of the important design controls is our super elevation maximum, Emax. And this is typically a policy level decision, so this will typically be kind of a given for an engineer. Emax is typically between 4 and 12 percent with higher super elevation rates on higher volume, higher speed, higher mobility highways. But except when there are icy or snowy conditions possible, and then you'll want to limit that maximum probably to, to 8 percent or less to reduce the likelihood of a vehicle sliding towards the inside of the curve on lower speed conditions during ice and snow. So this is again typically a given from the controlling transportation agencies policies, procedures, how they operate, Emax is going to be that given. As an engineer though, the design super elevation is something that you're going to have influence over and be able to impact and most importantly you'll need to adjust depending on the actual radius that you're using for your design. So this is the table for an Emax of 8% from the Ashto Green Book. And what we can see here, we've got columns representing the design speeds from 15 miles per hour to 80 miles per hour. And our rows represent our super elevation percentage. Our first two here, NC and RC, NC is normal crown. So that's 2% with a rooftop slope. So it's going to look like this shape. Reverse crown is a constant 2%. So it's a consistent slope at 2%. But we're going to call it RC for reverse crown. So it's really the same thing that we're going to see in the following rows. The whole cross slope is sloped at a consistent percentage, but it happens to be 2%. And we can see this, the rows go up to 8%, and that's because our maximum is 8%. So all the way from normal crown all the way up to 8%, that's our maximum super elevation rate. So for this table, we're not going to exceed 8%. So essentially, if you use the maximum super elevation rate, this bottom row here is where you're going to be locked in to radius values. So if you say we're going to use the maximum super elevation rate that we're allowed, these are the radii that you're going to use given your design speed. In reality, you're probably going to have other considerations for the radius. You're going to be trying to fit the road in between obstacles, something that's going to fit well. There's a number of things that, that may come into play, and so you're typically not going to use that maximum super elevation rate uh, that corresponds to the tightest radius. Typically, you're going to use some radius larger than that. So, for instance, if you were designing a 60 mile per hour road, 60 mile per hour design speed, and you said we're going to use a radius of 2,550 feet. You don't need to use an Emax. You don't need to use your Emax, which is 8%. You're going to use a smaller super elevation rate, which in this case is 5.6%. So if you use, if you have a 60 mile per hour design speed and you're using a radius of 2,550 feet, that should correspond to a design super elevation rate of 5.6%. So E. Sub D, the design super elevation rate would be 5.6% for this example. And that's in contrast to the E max. Everything in this table is an E max of 8%. And that's something that you would be given by your transportation agency to say for this type of roadway in this location, we use an E max of 8%. This will be the table you would use. It can range from, from other values of Emax, but in this case, 8%. And then based on our actually design radius, we're going to want to choose our design super elevation, which in this example that I gave is 5.6%.